Good afternoon, fellow friends on YouTube. Uh, I'm just here to finally show you my finished conversion I've done here for a friend. Um, so Andy, my friend, a uh, guitarist friend in another band I play with, he asked me if I could convert a an old AM radio uh, from 1955 and asked me if I could convert it into a little valve amp or tube amp. And, um, and I said, sure, he'd, he'd seen one I'd done earlier. Sorry to be jerky with the camera here. And that was an older one, another one I'd done. I kept mine in the original Philips uh, mantle case. But um, yeah, he, he wanted something similar, but didn't want the radio cabinet. So Andy found this, this gem on eBay, I think for around the $50 mark, and uh, came out of this case here. And that's also another Philips, I don't know if you can see, an Australian Philips radio from 1955. Um, and originally, um, it had a, you know, it had the AM section, obviously, with the, um, with the, uh, you know, the typical valves you get in an AM radio and a super head, um, you know, with a, with a 455 kilohertz uh, gen generator and, uh, had the, the rectifier valve here. Uh, originally, this was a, what they call a 6V4 or an EZ80. Uh, the output valve in the original radio was a 6M5. Both of these were really hard to source and I couldn't find them, so I actually had to do a, a replacement or a substitute. So this one here is now a, a 6CA4 rectifier, or also known as a, an e, EZ81. And the output valve here is a, an EL84 or a 6BQ5. Um, and I've also changed well, I put a, I fitted a preamp valve, and I thought, you know, everyone uses a 12 AX7. I, I thought I'd try something different, and I've got a whole stack of these 6 SN7s laying around. Never used one before, so I thought, why not give it a go? And I found a really nice Raython. Sorry, my bad. Oh, that's really hard to see in the light. But it's a Raython from from the early 60s. We can't even see that, can we? No, sorry. Anyway, uh, yeah, the goal was to, you know, keep it simple, low cost. Andy's going to fit this chassis into his own custom-made box. Um, I'm not sure what he's doing there. Or maybe something like that, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it was a good little fun project. I, I just had to make sure that uh, current ratings of these two didn't exceed original specs. I mean, there were a few more vowels for the radio section. So I figured there's a bit of, you know, there's a bit of a current loss there that we can gain from. Um, the rectifier valve, the one that I substituted in, actually does draw more heated current on the output uh, transformer. And the the other spec I had to key to was the output transformer only does six volt heaters. There's no five volt winding, um, so that keeps it you know fairly simple. Um, so I had to use a, a six volt rectifier. Um, here is the output transformer that was fitted to the original roller. Um, we had a little, I think it was like a little six inch oval shaped roller. And this was actually uh, pop riveted to the back of the speaker as, a, as was done in the early years. Um, I drilled that off very precariously and not, you know, careful not to puncture the cone. Um, yeah, fitted it on. It's got a, I can't remember the, I cannot remember the voltage ratio on that, but I worked out that a four ohm load presents the pre presents a, sorry presents a, a five a five kilo ohm primary impedance for the EL84 so they, they actually suited so this really does it works best at four ohm you don't want to go any lower um, and yeah anyway the outputs yeah you know, I'll show you in a minute we'll do a little demo how it's sounding it's sounding pretty good look it looks pretty bad I guess it looks messy because the chassis had many holes in it and there's I've fitted an output jack there for the for the speaker and uh, this this radio never came with a fuse. Uh, it just had a two two prong. Um, so I've converted that. I've put a three prong on here. As you can see, it's already plugged in the wall down there. Um, I put a power switch. I didn't worry about a standby. I thought the uh, the six CA four has got a slow turn on rate. And I thought that'll give these two valves to come up. Um, you know, have a steady rate and warm up. Um, if I turn it around here. This is the, sorry about the shakiness here guys. 
this is the internals. Look, it's a bit cramped, but um, the goal was to try and use um, parts I had on hand. Um, I did have to buy a few parts in saying that, but um, that's how the innards look. I I tried to keep the heater heaters away from signal areas as much as possible. Um, and there's my switch. There's my novel use of a hose clamp on the other side of this grommet. I, just to keep a, you know, put a bit of strain relief on the cable. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? I tried to, you know, heat shrink all the, the 240 volt AC coming in here in Australia. Um, obviously fitted the 240 volt fuse. There's the output jack and all these capacitors I had on hand. Um, these two capacitors I've actually put in series to halve the capacitance. So we've got about uh, 27 microfarad uh, for that first input filter on the rectifier. And I've got a few other stages that I've also um, put in as well, uh, just to keep the noise down. Um, I've put in the the virtual center tap there over the six volt heater warnings. Um, gee, I tell you what, it's come out pretty well. I've got to say, um, I probably I, I used a tone control from an early Fender style circuit. Um, it's more a here it is there, a couple of caps. So the reason these controls are mounted out like that is Andy's going to have his own control board that he's going to do on his box. So he needed them um, off the chassis. Um, there's arguments to and from doing that in regards to it makes more noise when you have all these extra cables. I've used screen cables um, to try and reduce that noise. But uh, yeah, the other funny thing actually you might get a kick out of, sorry about this, is that fuse holder there, that actually used to be a hole of uh, one of the 9 pin valve sockets in the old radio and I decided I could put my fuse holder in there but however my this fuse holder which I, I you know pillaged off another big solid state amp, uh, the, the hole was still too big and would you believe a week or so before I started this project I'd done a, a, a primer button, a fuel primer button replacement on an old whipper snipper and this flange, I could not believe it was just sitting on the bench where I was working on the chassis. This bloody flange here fitted over the valve hole. It gave the right hole size for the fuse holder. And not only that, the, the mounting holes on the flange matched up to the valve socket mounting holes. I, I couldn't be, believe my luck. I just thought, wow, sometimes you get all the luck. <laughs> so anyway, um, I've set the, uh, I've cathode biased the EL84, it's doing 29 milliamps. Uh, it's probably a bit cold, uh, but you might agree with me from the sound demo that um, it sounds all right. So I can always up it a bit if uh, the owner, Andy, is not happy with the sound. Anyway, guys, we'll, um, we'll uh, have a bit of a sound listen. Hello, back again. So for this demo, I should, should let you know too, I'm just using the, it's another little homemade amp I did a, based on a Fender 5 e 3 just a clone. It was my first attempt at uh, vinyl colouring, but anyway, that's another video. Um, I'm using the internal speaker of that just for this purpose of this demo. The only the only thing is that speaker is rated at uh, eight ohm, uh, whereas this 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 amp is more suited for four ohm. So you're going to get half the power. By the way, I should note the output power on this is only going to be about three watts into four ohm, so not very high power. But that's that's all Eddie wanted, um, and I've got a little also got the little. Uh, neon indicator. So yeah, let's let's have a listen. Okay, here we go. So I'm just using a little uh, Fender Strat. Uh, sorry, not a Fender Strat. Fender Strat copy. It's a little uh, Yamaha Pacifica. And I'll start off with the just with the bridge bridge sound. So yeah, see what you think. Way, volumes at about probably 20, uh, sorry, 20, two, two out of ten. So that's fairly clean. And we'll flick up to the 
the bridge. On this particular guitar, I've actually got a humbucker on the bridge, so a little bit better, a bit more gain. <laughs> Bridge the center pickup and the neck, which gives it more, it gives a bassier sound. And I'll put put the volume up a bit. You can hear it starting to break up. So just before the center. here in this room I've got switch mode power supplies everywhere so it's probably picking up a bit of that hash noise you get with the old switching transformers <laughs>